With Downloader being removed from the Google Play Store, there's a strong possibility at some point in the future, it could also get removed from the Amazon App Store. This means no side loading on Fire TVs, Fire TV Sticks and Fire TV Cubes. At the moment, this is the only way you can side load an app on there. Or is it? Can you use your laptop to side load apps? We are going to look into this as an alternative, just in case Downloader ever gets removed from the Amazon App Store. You always need a backup plan for things like these, and we're going to show you how you can do that. If you're watching this video as a short, tap on the thumbnail in the bottom right hand corner right now to see the full video. If you're already watching the full video, hang tight. More details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. I need to stress at the time of recording this video, the 23rd of May 2023, Whilst Downloader has been removed from the Google Play Store, it has not been removed from the Amazon App Store. But what I'm saying is it could be at any time. If somebody sends a DMCA complaint to Amazon, they may have to remove it like Google has done with the Google Play Store. So it's a good idea to have another way of carrying on sideloading apps on your device. So that is what the video is all about. It's about not scaring anyone, but it's about having another way of doing things. Now, I did do a video a few days ago which showed you a couple of other ways. One, if you've still got Downloader on your device. And another way was if you've got an Android device, a way of sideloading apps to your Fire TV device. Now, if you want to go and see those, there'll be a link to that in the description of this video and there may well be a thumbnail right now in the top right hand corner of this video which leads you back to it. So let's get straight to it. So let's open our browser. I'm going to open Microsoft Edge and I'm going to go up to the address bar at the top of the screen, not the search bar in the middle, but the address bar at the top. Delete out anything that might be in there and then you want to type flaky.co.uk. That's flaky. .co.uk, just as I've typed it in at the top there. If you need to, pause the video whilst you type that in or write it down. Once you've typed it in, then tap on the enter or return key on your keyboard, and there we go. If you've got the correct website, then you should be seeing this. Go to my ADB GUI app, left click once, and then click on where it says their version 2.1. Now that might be higher by the time you see this, but at the moment, as of May 2023, version 2.1 is the latest version. Click on that. And when you click on it, you might see this. It might say flaky ADB GUI dot zip isn't commonly downloaded. Make sure you trust flaky ADB GUI dot zip before you open it. So move your mouse over it, click on the three dots just over there and then click keep. So we get another warning here. Make sure you trust flaky adb GUI dot zip before you open it. Go down to show more, click on the arrow just to the right and then click keep anyway. Then once it's downloaded, we need to scroll down a little bit further and we need to click on this little link here, this SCR CPY ADB remote control app. So we need to download that as well. So click on that. That starts to download. It's slightly larger, so it's going to take a little bit longer than flaky ADB GUI to download. But once it's downloaded, then what we need to do is we need to go into our downloads folder. Oh, there we go. So it's come up here again. It isn't commonly downloaded. Make sure you trust this. So move your mouse over it, click on the three dots, Click on keep, click on the little arrow just to the right of show more and then click on keep anyway. OK, so once it's finished downloading, what we can do is we can click on this little folder just up here. And what we're looking for is we're looking for, first of all, flaky ADB GUI. So let's move our mouse over that, right click on it and then left click extract all. 
and it's asking us where do we want to extract it to. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder on the desktop. So click on browse, okay, click on desktop there on the left and then click new folder just up there. I'm going to call it flaky, F-L-A-K-I. E. Press enter or return on your keyboard once you've typed it and then double click on flaky and then click select folder just at the bottom there and then click extract. Okay, we're gonna close down this window that's just open. So click on the cross in the top right hand corner and we're gonna go into this SCR CPY Win64 version 1.2.0. So right click on that, click on extract all, click on browse, go to desktop. So click desktop, double click on flaky, click on select folder, click on extract. And there we are, that's all the files we need. So click on the cross in the top right hand corner there. Now these two files in our downloads folder, we can get rid of those, we can delete them. So just right click on them. And if show more options comes up, left click it and then just click delete. Same with flaky ADB GUI there, right click. If show more options come up, click on it and then click delete. And then we can close all of these windows down. So we're back to the desktop. And there's our folder we created earlier called Flaky. So double left click Flaky. And we want to find this icon just here, Flaky ADB GUI. And what we want to do is we want to move our mouse over it, click on the right mouse button. And if you've got show more options, click that and then click properties. And then we want to click on unblock just there. So the little box to the left of unblocks, put a tick in it, click on apply and then click on compatibility. And then we want to click on change settings for all users. And we want to click on run this program as an administrator. So put a little checkbox, check mark in the box beside that. Click on apply, click on OK, click on OK again. So we now just double left click on flaky, click on yes. And we've got to do a little bit of setting up now. So what we're going to do is we want to click on locate ADB and then double click on ADB there. And then we click into remote port there and we type 5555. Then we need to go across to locate SCR CPY. Click on that and double click SCR CPY. We now need to hop across to the Fire Stick and then go across to the settings cog just over there on the right. Go down to My Fire TV, middle button, and then go into about, so middle button again. Once you're in about, go down to network, and what you're looking for is you need to make a note of whatever is below IP address. In the case of me, that's 192.168.10.106. Yours will be different. Write down whatever is below IP address on yours. Then we need to press the back button once, go into developer options. Now, if you haven't got developer options, then all you need to do is go into about and then find the name of your device and highlight it. Like mine, mine says Fire TV Stick 4K. Yours may say something different. Just press the middle button on the remote control until you see no need, you're already a developer, come up at the bottom of the screen, then stop pushing the middle button. Then press the back button on the remote and there you should see developer options just below about. Go down to developer options, middle button. Then we need to make sure that ADB debugging is switched on. As you can see, mine switched off. So highlight it, middle button on the remote control and there you go, it's on. Click remote IP. So mine was 192.168.10.106. Then a good thing after you've typed in your IP address to do is to go into file and go into save default settings. That saves you having to enter all this in again next time you use the app. Now the next thing you wanna do is you wanna click on this little box here that says load defaults on start. There we go. And then what we need to do now is we need to click on connect ADB device. And once we've done that, go across to our Fire Stick or Cube or TV. Then you'll get this message come up on the screen, allow USB debugging. Make sure that you press the middle button on the remote to put a tick just to the left of always allow from this computer. Then go down to OK, middle button. 
Now, if you find that you don't get that message come up on the screen, then you might need to toggle AD debugging off and then back on again a few times before the message then appears. If you still don't get that message come up, then the best thing to do is press the back button on the remote once, go down to restart, middle button, let the Fire Stick restart or the Fire TV Cube restart, go back into developer options and again, toggle AD be debugging until you get this message. And there we go. Once it's attached, just click on refresh device list. And there you go. Under list of devices attached, it will actually tell you the IP address. So next thing we need to do is we need to download a uh, an, an APK file. So let's go into the browser, go to my website, cwtech.co dot uk forward slash d and that takes you to the downloads page let's go down and find downloader and left click once on it so that's downloading once it's downloaded okay we can shut our browser down go to locate file on flakies go to install an apk and then locate file and then go to the downloads folder there and there's downloader double left click that and then select device just down here to the left of run command. Click on the IP address of our Fire TV device and then click run command. Wait a few seconds and hopefully there you go. Downloader should now appear. Now what we need to do is go into downloader and then when it says allow downloader to access photos, media and files on your device, you must say allow. So make sure that allows highlighted middle button and then middle button again. And then what we need to do is press the home button on the remote to go back to the home screen and then across to the settings cog over there, down to my fire TV, down to developer options, middle button, and then down to install unknown apps. Highlight downloader, if it says off beneath it, middle button, and that turns it on. If you have apps from unknown, if you have apps from unknown sources, instead of install unknown apps, then highlight it, middle button, middle button again to turn on. Then press the home button on the remote control to go back to the main screen, find downloader, go into it, and then you should be able to download as normal. So there you go, that guide showed you how you can quite easily transfer files from your PC or laptop straight onto your Fire TV stick, Fire TV or Fire TV Cube. I hope you liked this video and if you did, whilst you're here, why not stick around? Have a look through my YouTube channel. I've got thousands of other videos here covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully whilst you're here, you're gonna find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money.